The Eurozone sovereign debt crisis is far from over and finance ministers and heads of the European Union have been trying to figure out a form of fiscal consolidation and more economic governments in the European Union and especially in Eurozone member states. But I want to know what impact that's having on European youth. So to find out more, joining me here this morning is Emily Turunen, the Green MEP from Denmark. Thanks very much for meeting me here for a coffee. Now, Emily, you are definitely an expert on youth unemployment. Last year, just you um, drafted a, a document, a report to present to your fellow colleagues in the Employment and Social Affairs Committee. And you actually wrote in that, let's turn generation lost into generation hope. So how do you feel right now and what do you think the impact of this harmonisation economic governance, harmonisation of taxes and economic governance will have on European youth? Hmm. I'm not feeling um, too optimistic for the moment. Uh, I, I'm a bit afraid that uh, all this focus on, um, on getting the, the, the budgets uh, right and the, econ the economy right is taking over uh, employment, uh, young people situation. So we are not really thinking employment situations into our economic policies, we are just cutting. And I'm very afraid what social and also economic impact this will have in the long run. And we know that young people are those who are hit hardest by this crisis and I'm afraid they will not feel any relief or any any better mm -hmm. conditions the next years. And you know yourself as a young person, um, as I said, you're only 26, you're the youngest member of the European mm -hmm. Parliament here in Brussels. I mean, you know what young people are going through, you know what it's like to be young and to be ambitious and to come straight out of university and be eager to start in the workplace. But in today's world, that's just not happening. We have overqualified, precarious interns, 32 year olds who still live with their parents and they're earning 600 euros a month. I mean, Yes, it, it's, it's a crazy situation right now and I think we are about to, to repeat what we did wrong in the 80s. So mm. back then we had also a big unemployment crisis where many young people were excluded from the labour market and had very big difficulties to get their foothold. And we can see now that this generation was more or less lost, at least a lot of them never really got back on the labour market and we, you can see in their salaries, in their living conditions, they are behind mm. the rest. And I'm afraid we're repeating that in the new mm. century with the new generation. And all they did wrong was to be young at the wrong time. Course, and they yeah. are more well educated than ever. They are more ambitious than ever, uh, more willing to work. But And during the boom, for example, in Ireland anyway, they were the ones who were studying while everyone else was spending. <laughs> so they're definitely not the ones to blame. Now, going back to the Commission, the Commission has, last June, they signed off on the Euro, Europe 2020. Mm -hmm which is obviously to create more jobs by, by 2020 and increase stability and growth. But obviously these, this new fiscal package that they've, that they've just signed off and they've just been working for the last few months goes completely against that. Can you explain that to us? Is there any sense in this, in this logic? Or? No. <laughs> no, I, I think <clears throat> there has been some critique also from this House that the EU 2020 is a nice document. We all support the content in there. It is ambitious when it comes to employment, sustainable development, but uh, it's not implemented. We can't see it anywhere and uh, I think we have to find room now for investments. We cannot only focus on budget consolidation and austerity measures. We have also to find how can we invest in education, in research, uh, in innovation, because that's that's what. So we know what we have to do, but we don't have any answers yet. Is that what you're we saying? don't have any answers. We only have this one side of the coin, and we need the other one also. And how and can we get the other one? What can you do? Well, I think we also have has to, to 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 look for new income. For example, the banks threw us into this crisis. Why can't they help us to get back on the track again? So the banks should promote young people and. No, I'm saying the bank programs. should contribute. For example, we could have uh, a tax on financial transactions to support this, uh, uh, these investments for growth. Mm -hmm. uh, so a little more balance in, in, on the income side and focus on how to get find room for investments instead of just doing this consolidation. Mm -hmm. Because if we keep consolidating without the other side, we will have more unemployed, that is very, very expensive, and then we can keep on going like that forever. It will not really change. We will mm -hmm. not get a new uh, chance for, for growth and jobs. So, um, 
because that obviously is having a huge effect on our generation, on the young generation. They're yes. not getting married, they're not having children, they're they're living at home till longer, and they're just kind of surviving, just living. So it's a lot by. of lost human resources. Mm. It's also a lot of of money, uh, really, the, that we we lose as a society because they couldn't contribute to productivity, innovation. They mm. are well educated with a lot of ideas. I meet them all the time. It's mm. my friends and I meet them here in Brussels when they come knocking on, on my door looking for their fourth internship. Sure. So it's it's really a lack of uh, of uh, of resources. That, uh, so just finally, Emily, one more question. Are you optimistic about the future of young people? I want to be optimistic and I think we should be and we should keep looking for ways but we, the leaders, the political leaders in the European Union, but also in the governments, they have to change their policies if I am to become optimistic okay. wholeheartedly. Uh, so uh, we need new policies. And the EU Observer wants to know whether you are optimistic or not, or what the situation is like in your country and what the unemployment rate is like there too. So please leave us a comment underneath the video or write us an email at video at eu Emily, thank you very much for coming in this morning and thank you very much for watching.